I leave them, they will continue. I know. Good morning. If I don't say good morning, it seems that you will continue to visit. So, so let's, let's get started. We're a little bit behind our time this morning, but welcome to everyone. It's good to see you here this morning again, and may the Lord bless us as we come together to worship Him. I told the elders today it's uh, been exactly a year since I've stood here preaching and start preaching the first time in grace. Uh, thank you for all your care and for all your love to me and Lydia. We really appreciate that. A um, few announcements. Um, most of you see it in the bulletin, but just remember our birthdays. Uh, tomorrow, my beloved wife, it's, it's her birthday, Wednesday, David's birthday, David Holmes and Bunny McHenry, and Saturday, Dorothy Day. So congratulations to all of you. <clears throat> then also congratulations to Daniel and K Kerry Lowry with a baby boy that they had. Uh, Jonathan, Daniel, was born on the 27th of last month. Uh, la that last month, uh, he weighed 10 pounds and 9, nine ounces. He kept her busy, I tell you. They are just across from the retention pond from us, so we know all about it. Uh, you have two very thankful parents there, I can tell you. Uh, thank you also for those who arranged to take food to them, Lana and your team. We appreciate that also. Uh, remember our men's Bible study this afternoon uh, at 4 o'clock via Zoom. We will continue again with, with our routine. Uh, the adult Sunday school classes uh, for the next three weeks, just to give Rob a break, uh, will be combined uh, with the new members class, and we will have those two classes uh, in the fellowship hall. Uh, as I said, only for three, for three Sundays. Then Rob will continue, and we will continue in the sunroom with the new members class. Uh, our online Wednesday evening Bible study also continuing as we're studying through the book of James. We are just about done with James chapter 2, and we'll start with James chapter 3, Lord willing, this coming week. Uh, there's a request uh, from the session that if you have any church keys, uh, that and while if you are not in any leadership position, that you would please return that uh, to uh, Cheryl in the church office. Uh, so that we could just um, start making new plans and how we're going to, uh, and I know Brad is working on that, a new key policy for the future. So thank you for that also, Brad, and thank you for those uh, who have um, served in the past, and, and if you can bring the keys back, we will really appreciate that, just to consolidate a few things surrounding the buildings. Um, also, uh, we, um, there's a tie at this point in terms of the voting uh, for the times uh, in the bulletin for the Christmas Eve service. So if you have not voted on the time which you prefer, please do so today uh, because we want to break the tie. So <laughs> between those two times, we, we still need an answer today, but this is going to be the last day that you have a chance to vote. So please do so. Um, and again, there's another chance. Uh, already uh, some of you uh, have responded, but if you need any assistance with the technology, whether it's on a cell phone, a tablet, uh, iPad, or computer, uh, to uh, put Zoom on and to help you to uh, join us with Bible studies, uh, you are more than welcome to uh, let the office know, and we will have two men available uh, to help you with that. Uh, Genesis 7 um, project, uh, birth, uh, our outreach of the church, uh, honor birth, uh, please, they are collecting right now for uh, the Christmas season. Uh, so see the bulletin for ways that you can participate uh, so that we can get all those things in, in good time so that they can distribute it to those in need. Continue to pray for those on our prayer list. We also want to welcome two uh, visitors today that moved into the area, Esther and Clint uh, Stockton. If you could just raise your hands. There they are in the back. 
Welcome to you uh, here in our midst, and may the Lord bless you in our fellowship and worshiping with Him today. Uh, for some reason, um, the, in the bulletin, it did not indicate in the worship order that we have the Lord's Supper, but we have the Lord's Supper today, as always. So just after the sermon, we'll continue to celebrate the Lord's Supper. So let's take time now as we prepare ourselves for worship. Let us rise to worship the God who comes to judge the earth in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all stars of light. Praise Him, highest heavens. And the waters above the heavens. Praise the Lord from the earth. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and virgins, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. Let us pray. Our Almighty God and our Father in heaven, we are so blessed to come in your presence. We come not because we are worthy, but because of your own Son. And we ascribe to you on this day that you have set aside, O oh Lord, to you glory and strength. We ascribe to you the glory due your name. And we are here to worship you, O oh Lord, in the splendor of holiness. Your voice, O oh Lord, we know will go forth all over the world today. Already in some places it happened. And it's our prayer that you would bless the preaching of your word in all places, but also today in this place also in this town. And Lord, that those who belong to you, that we, they would be brought to you. That your Holy Spirit would continue to prepare the work and the preaching of your word, um, not only in this area, but also in our own hearts. That we would receive your word with mildness, with meekness, and with obedience. And Lord, that through our lives more and more, it would be clear that we worship the living true God. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, 
turn to God's word in Exodus chapter 20 as we listen to commandments that God has given there. Then God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. The second commandment, you shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to thousands, those who love me and keep my commandments. The third commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. The fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God, in it you shall not do any work you or your son or your daughter, your male or your female servant, or your cattle or your sojourner who stays with you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. And therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. The fifth commandment, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God hath given you. The sixth commandment, you shall not murder. The seventh commandment, you shall not commit adultery. The eighth commandment, you shall not steal. The ninth commandment, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. The tenth commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Let's take time now as we reflect on God's Word and how it shines into our lives uh, and bring our sins uh, before Him. And after a while, I will lead us in the prayer of confession. Our Father in heaven, we are so weak and over and over we resolve to do what is good and honoring unto you, but even as your children, renewed by the Holy Spirit, before we think we have sinned against you once more, so often we do not, do not think of your holiness or your presence in us. And we grieve your Holy Spirit. Yes, we do cast your Spirit to shed tears over our sin. And our rebellion against your purposes for our lives. And to become what you want us to be so often so visible. Lord, forgive us when we cast pain to others with our sinful behavior. 
Just forgive us for committing murder again this past week through our words and our thoughts. Forgive us if we, co- if we called evil good and good evil, or if we concealed the truth, or when we were silent when we had to speak the truth. Forgive us if we spoke the truth maliciously to a wrong end, or even perverting it. Lord, forgive us if we lied or if we made ourselves guilty in, in any other ways. Perhaps we have raised false rumors. Perhaps we have just been ugly in the way we act towards someone. Perhaps we were so self-focused that we so often forget that we hurt others by our behavior. So often we love ourselves more than we love you and than we love others. Forgive us, Lord, when we want to offer you the minimum, the least, the poorest of what we have. Forgive us when we are lukewarm in your service. When we serve you with a divided heart. Lord, purify us from all that is evil and work in us the desire to flee from that which is evil and to overcome what is evil by good. And continue to give us a hunger for righteousness, a love for the fellowship of believers and a willingness to serve each other. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 through 10, assures us by saying, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. Let us sing the power of the cross.
heavens torn in two, dead or raised to life, finish the victory cry. This the power of the cross, Christ became So much more than we can profess our faith when I ask you, is any man able perfectly to keep the commandments of God? And we all say, no, no mere, mere man, man since, since the fall, fall is able in his life, life perfectly, perfectly to, keep to keep the commandments, commandments of God, of God but, but doth daily break, break them in thought, word, word and deed. Are all transgressions of the law equally heinous? Some, Some sins, sins in themselves, in themselves and, and by reason of several aggravations, aggravations are more heinous in the, in the sight of God than others. others. What of every sin deserve? Every, every sin deserveth God's, God's wrath and, and curse, curse, both in this life and that and which, which is, is to come. come. What of God require of us that we may escape his wrath and curse due to us for sin? To escape, to escape the, the wrath and curse of God due to us for sin, sin. God, God requires of us faith in Jesus Christ, Christ repentance unto life, with the diligent use of all the outward means whereby Christ communicated to us the benefits of redemption. Amen. You may be taking your seats, and if you would turn with me to Proverbs chapter 6 as we listen to an Old Testament reading this morning. So we're reading through the book of Proverbs. We read now Proverbs chapter 6, verse 1 through 19. And let us listen to God's word. My son, you have become surety for your neighbor, have given a pledge for a stranger. If you have been snared with the words of your mouth, have been caught with the words of your mouth, do this then, my son, and deliver yourself, since you have come into the hand of your neighbor. Go humble yourself and importune your neighbor. Give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourselves like a gazelle from the hunter's hand and like a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, O sluggard. Observe her ways and be wise, which having no chief, officer, or ruler, prepares her food in the, win in the summer and gathers her provision in the harvest. How long will you lie down, O slugger? When will you arise from your sleep? That little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, 
your poverty will come in like a vagabond and your need like an armed man. A worthless person, a wicked man, is the one who walks with a perverse mouth, who winks with his eyes, who signals with his feet, who points with his fingers, who with perversity in his heart continually devises evil, who spreads strife. Therefore, his calamity will come suddenly. Instantly he will be broken and there will be no healing. There are six things which the Lord hates, yes, seven, which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil, a false witness who utters lies, and one who spreads strife among brothers. So far the reading of God's word. Let's glorify and worship him now with our tithes and our offerings. Father, we want to thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that we can share um, back to you, Lord, what you have given to us. We give you thanks and praise, Lord, for the ability to work and the ability to give back into your kingdom. We pray that you would use it for the advancement of your kingdom throughout the world, Lord, and in this community. And we just want to praise you and honor you and glorify your holy and majestic name in Jesus' name. Amen.
I take your seats and let us pray together. Almighty God and our Father in heaven, we come before you this morning as your church. We bring praises to you for your goodness, for your provision, for your love for us. Lord, we thank you that you have upheld us through all these past months as we have experienced times that we never have experienced, that you have guided us through uncertainties and uncertain times, that you have gave, given us wisdom to make decisions, that even though there were changes, Lord, that we were still able to adjust that we were able to continue your work also here in this church. Lord, we just praise and thank you that even in the midst of this time of the epidemic, that we could still worship you, that we were still able to, for the most, have contact with each other, and that we were able to study your word, whether it be in person or online at first, just thank you, Lord, again for the abilities and these possibilities that open up to us. Thank you for those who were able to put everything together for us also technologically. We were able to broadcast our worship service. So, Lord, we pray also for those at home to, today and ask that you would uh, let them worship with us in spirit and truth, that they would not in a more relaxed situation, lose of the reverence that we need to come in your presence and to worship you as the living God. Lord, we thank you that you have blessed us with your word. We ask that you would continue to lead us in such a way that your word will always be first in our lives, whether it be in our personal lives where we are at home as a family, as husband and wife, uh, whether it be as a session, whether it be here as a church. Lord, it comes to only one thing in our lives, and that is to accept your authority for what we are doing. And you have re clearly revealed to us uh, your will through your word, and we just thank you that we have it, and we ask that you would continue to guide us to obey you. As I said earlier in our prayer, Lord, with meekness, but that your Holy Spirit would also come and help us to apply these truths of your word in our daily lives in a wonderful way. That our strive to, uh, to do what is right in your eyes and our hunger for righteousness would continue to grow. Lord, we thank you for this past year. Uh, also, I praise and thank you personally uh, to be the pastor of this church. I pray that you would continue, Lord, to sustain me, that you would just continue to lead me in the ways together with the session to, to do what is best for your uh, kingdom, what is right in your eyes, what is favorable and beneficial to your church. Lord, I pray thank you for each and every one who belong to this church and ask that you would continue to bless our relationship with each other. That, Lord, we would strive nothing, uh, strive to do nothing else but to love each other uh, as you have ordered us to do. Lord, as a church, we want to stand also before you one day when you return. And in Jesus Christ, being washed clean in his blood, Father, thank you that we are able to celebrate the Lord's Supper again this morning, something that you have ordered us to do until the day that Jesus will return. Let us continue to keep our eyes focused, even in the midst of the uncertain times that we are living in. Lord, let us continue to focus on that day and await that day with expectation and live every day with that expectation. Not that it's as if Lord, we should live just dreaming about the future while we are focusing our eyes on the heavens. 
let our feet be steadfast on the ground and doing our work faithfully uh, in your kingdom as we witness to the world, as we continue to be sanctified ourselves, as we just continue to spread the truth of the gospel. Father, we pray that even towards our local authorities, you would lead us to opportunities to speak the truth of your word. Lord, we so often feel overwhelmed that we feel that we can do nothing, but you could open doors for us. We want to be obedient unto you, and we know that even here we can change a community uh, so that they also become more and more Christ-like and more godly and seek to do what is glorifying to you. So help us in that process. Open doors, even in our daily weeks, discussions with people. Place people on our paths that we could witness to. Use us to make a difference in the lives of so many who don't know you. And Father, as we look at the politics, we just ask that you would come and bring order in the chaos that there is that you would just continue to assure us in these uncertainties that you are in control, that our candidate has already won. Jesus Christ is on the throne. But Lord, you know that we have to live in the midst of these times. We have to make decisions. And you know so often, Lord, as we listen and watch the television, it disturbed our hope. But we ask now that you would just keep us uh, from... Uh, become, becoming terrified in whichever ways it is. It doesn't matter what it is that makes us terrified or overwhelm us. That we would desperately, daily, just continue to trust you more. That we would continue, Lord, to give all our anxieties to you. That we would continue to follow you as you lead us. It doesn't matter what happens. Lord, we know we can still live. We, still, we know we can still glorify you. And that's what we want to do day by day, also in this coming week. So we pray that you would indeed lead us on that path and let us live a life that you have already in eternity prepared for us in the good works that you have laid out before us. Father, we thank you for those who celebrate their birthdays in this coming week. We ask that you would keep your hand of blessing upon each and every one of them. Let it also be a day for them in which they will experience again uh, your goodness as they are reminded of many years that you have sustained them, how you have uh, not only brought, you, uh, brought them unto yourself uh, and changed their hearts, made them spiritually alive, but how you continue to sanctify them in your service. And Father, we praise and thank you for Daniel and Kiri Lowry and for little Jonathan that was born and that everything is going so well with him now. And we ask that you would continue to raise him up, and that they will continue to raise him in the fear and instruction of the Lord, that he will also one day uh, be clearly uh, a child of the living God. Lord, I pray for all our youth. I pray that you would also be with those who are busy with studies, those who are busy with exams, those who are... Um, just in this uncertain times, also have to find their way through college uh, and finding work uh, for vacation times. Uh, Lord, would you, even in these things, make their hearts, uh, f filled w fill their hearts with peace, fill their hearts with rest in you, that they would trust you in all things and realize that you will also provide for them. We pray your hand of blessing upon all the activities that are planned for this week. We pray for our uh, visitors this morning, for Esther and Clint, as they have moved into our area. We pray that they would find uh, their uh, footwork well and that they would be comfortable here in the midst of, of us, uh, that they would be, um, be accepted here also with hospitality. Uh, Lord, that they would see... Uh, your hand uh, and your love also in, in our way uh, and, and ways of living. Father, we pray that you would bless us now as we uh, pray for those uh, who 
our sick. We ask your blessing upon each and every one of them. Uh, there are so many on our prayer list. We just ask in general that you would keep your hand of protection and guidance over them all. Uh, and that we would continue to f be faithfully praying for them uh, day after day. Thank you for those, Lord, who has uh, recovered um, after uh, fall, uh, after accidents, uh, injuries. Uh, just thank you that they are here with us this morning, like Carol, uh, who are worshiping again with us. Lord, thank you just for each and every one. Father, your work, word is perfect and sweeter than a honeycomb. As we open it now, we ask that you would come and speak to your children, and that you would draw us closer unto you through your word. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, I um, said we're going to return to Amos, and that's exactly what we're going to do this morning. Um, let us read from Amos chapter 5, verse 16 through 27. Amos chapter 5, verse 16 through 27. We ended in um, our last sermon uh, at chapter 5, verse 15, so we're good on track. Listen to the inerrant and holy word of God. Therefore thus says the Lord God of hosts, the Lord there is wailing in all the plazas, and in all the streets they say, Alas, alas, they also call the farmer the morning, and professional mourners to lamentation. And in all the vineyards there is wailing, because I will pass through the midst of you, says the Lord. Chapter 5, verse 18. Alas, you who are longing for the day of the Lord, for what purpose will the day of the Lord be to you? It will be darkness and not light. As when a man flees from a lion and a bear meets him, or goes home, leans his hand against the wall, and a snake, bait, a snake bites him, will not the day of the Lord be darkness instead of light, even gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I reject your festivals, nor do I delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer up to me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. And I will not even look at the peace offerings of your fatlings. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not even listen to the sound of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Did you present me with sacrifices and grain offerings in the wilderness for forty years, O house of Israel? You also carried along Sikoth, your king, and Kion, your images, the star of your gods which you made for yourself. Therefore I will make you go into exile beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. So far the reading of God's word. Listen again to verse 18. Alas, you are longing for the day of the Lord. And verse 24, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Now, we have spoken on verse 24 with the previous sermon, but, of course, it's going to come into uh, our focus again this morning as we talk on awaiting the day of the Lord. Now, beloved in our Lord Jesus Christ, when we studied the first chapters of Amos, we were exposed you will remember, to the corruption of Israel, the people of God. We have also seen that God's people were supposed to be a light to the nations, that they actually were a shameful testimony uh, to the world, uh, and for that matter, in the eyes of God. That while God was so good to them, He called them unto Himself, He delivered them, and he always protected them. He always guided them. He always cared for them. And yet they drifted further and further away from God. They were not thankful for their salvation. They have misused the gifts that God has given them. They actually started to live a completely corrupted life. We have also seen something else about God's people. And that was that despite 
of their corruption, they were still very religious. And that sounds so good, right? But it was a, an absolute terrible state that they were in because their corrupted hearts eventually affected their religious practice and their worship. They offered to God worship that we see here, and that's how it's described here, that he despised and that he hated. And we have seen very clearly that we cannot worship God in ways we desire. We can only worship him in ways he prescribed to us in his word. We cannot subtract, we cannot add to the word of God. And the only <clears throat> and holy true God literally tells his church how to worship him. The ways and the attitude of our hearts are prescribed to us in the word of God. We cannot worship with corrupted and with unrepented hearts. And I hope we remember this when we come to worship every Sunday. Because if we come in here and we feel no need for repentance and spiritual growth, if we come in here without the deep realization that we have no right, actually, to come in the presence of the Lord, was it not for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and His merits, then more soul-searching is necessary in our own life. Because only when we completely rest in Christ can our worship be acceptable to God. So I would like to continue with Amos. And you might perhaps ask, why are we continuing with Amos in the season of Christmas? The answer is simple. Because of what I just said. If you do not rest in Christ, you cannot worship. And you will still hear Christ this moment. As before, in every sermon, you will still be reminded of how thankful we have to be for His coming to this world and God's wonderful plan of and for our salvation. So let us see what we have here before us this morning. The first thing that I want you to see is the overflowing corruption in Israel. Amos <clears throat> warned Israel over and over again, but they did not listen. I'm not going to go into all the detail again. But it reminded me of all these things that were said, reminded me of the words in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, where the author encouraged his listeners by saying this. He says, Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. Now, the author of, of the Hebrews um, by using these expressions, paying attention and drifting away, he actually make use of, a st of striking images embedded in the, impression, uh, in the expression paying attention is the idea of containing something. But while drifting away, just has the opposite meaning. It has the meaning of overflowing, of spilling over. So Israel's, I want to say, spiritual state was at a point of uncontained sinfulness and corruption. Have you not sometimes looked at society and you thought, where is this going to end? It's like it never stops. And that's the whole idea, that uncontained evilness that is just continuing to flow over and spill right through society. It spilled in Israel's time through the whole nation, and it corrupted every part of society. And you can go and read that again, chapter 5 or 7 and 10 through 13, and summarize the detail of that corruption. I'll just give you a hint of that again this morning. They turned justice into bitterness. They cast righteousness down to the earth. There was just injustice all the time. What was supposed to be right is now evil, and what's supposed to be evil is now right. They get that completely confused. They hated the one who reproves in the gate, those who correct in the courts. And what was the gate? The gate was the usual place of administrating justice, 
There where people were reproving and passing justice and saying they even brought the children who were disobedient to the gate in the city so that the elders could talk to them and admonish them. And the prophet now says that the corrupt people of Israel despised the judges who reproved them for their bad conduct and acts of fraud and violence. They even hated the prophets and other people, private people who rebuked them for their ungodliness and for their unrighteousness. So they hated the ones who spoke to them with integrity. We see that even today. Those who speak with integrity, those are the ones who are despised. Yes, and then we see further, they imposed heavy rent on the poor. They forced the poor to give them grain. They oppressed the righteous and take bribes. They deprived the poor of justice even in the courts. And yet, we see that they were such a religious people. You saw the previous time how they brought their tithes. If you re- think back about the, f- the previous sermon, they actually even brought more than they were supposed to. That was prescribed. How they sacrificed, how they worshipped. You could say the churches were full and the songs were heard everywhere on the Sabbath. Music dedicated to the praise of God filled their temples. But what the prophet say, what did the prophet say about the religious state in Israel? He said, God despises your feast, and he doesn't care about your assemblies. Yes, God said he hated their festivals, and even if they offer up burnt offerings and grain offerings, he will not accept them. He actually even told them to take the noise of their songs away from him and that he did not want to listen to the sounds of their harps. That was verse 23. You see, a church full of people is not necessarily an indication of a healthy spiritual life or a good relationship with the Lord. You can do all the outward things, but it doesn't Give us a guarantee of what's going on in the heart and what you're hiding from others. That is what happened with God's people. It happened for that matter to the church. It seems like religion just became an instrument to make themselves feel good about themselves again. It seems like religion became an instrument in their own hands. Their religious practices, you could say, seems like became a cover for their sins. Well, as if that was possible, but they thought so. It is often behind the screen of religious activity or persona that people continue their unrighteousness and evil behavior. That's why it's also sometimes necessary that you ask, why do people act in a certain way? Because there's often sin behind that, that come forward in certain behavior. It is often behind the screen. So clearly, God is the only one that look into our hearts. But God's people clearly deceive themselves here, very, very much. They thought God, th- th- that they could win God's favor when they are still religious. They wanted to continue with their sinful behavior, but on the other hand, they still had to keep God quiet and, and keep, them, keep God on their side. But the way they appear before God, he says it himself was despicable in his eyes. He knew their corrupted hearts. He knew their lifestyles. Their deception was to the point that they have become so used to their sin and were so brainwashed by their sinful lifestyles that they actually did not know what is objectively the truth, what was right and what was wrong anymore. As a matter of fact, they believed that their own sinful way of living was actually the right way. It did not bother them anymore. 
but their deceptive hearts did not only have an influence on the way they lived each day, but it also had an influence on how they looked towards the future. That's the second thing I want you to see. Because the prophet says, Alas, you are longing for the day of the Lord. They were looking forward to the day of the Lord. Yes, they could not wait for this day to come. And this is exactly where Israel was in their spiritual decline. Woe, says Amos. He's almost caught off guard. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord, he asked him. It is darkness and not light. As if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned as his hand against the wall and a serpent bit him. I'll get to that in a minute. You know, it is sad when someone says, I do not believe in God. I do not believe in a day of reckoning. So don't come to me and talk to me about that. Just leave me alone and I can live my life. You've probably dealt with someone like that. But you know what is worse? It is worse when someone thinks he knows the Lord. If someone thinks he serves God and actually looks forward to the day of the Lord, well, that day will actually not be the day that he thinks it's going to be. It's actually worse if someone, someone thinks he loves the Lord and serves Him well, but unrighteousness is still hiding in his life somewhere, and he's just using his religion to cover up the sin in his heart. Clearly, the prophet said that day will not be something good. It would be something terrible because of man's false security, because of our deception. And that was the case with Israel. Their longing for the day of the Lord was not an indication of a high spiritual standard, but just the contrary. Because they did not repent of their sinful ways, the day of the Lord will be a day of darkness and not of light. And that's exactly how that day would be for every unrepentant sinner. There is no escaping the day of the Lord. And that is what Amos tried to show us here with this image that he is saying in, I see the verse here, um, verse 16, Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord, it is darkness and not light, as if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him. You see what Amos is describing here? He's he gives us this picture of a man that is running away. He's running for his life. He's fleeing for his life. He's not able to escape. First, he's fleeing from the king of the forest, the lion, scared to death. And with all his efforts and power, he manages to escape. But what happens then? Then he comes across a bear. And then he runs away from this new danger, this growling bear with his sharp claws. And again he escapes, this time fleeing and hiding inside a hunter's house. And he's worn out, and he's leaning against the wall to rest. And the next moment, what happens? A snake bit him in his hand, and the poison kills him. The point is there is no escape of the Lord's day. It is coming. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. His brother and sister, the day of God's judgment on Israel as a nation is now past, but our day of the Lord, the day of final judgment, is still coming. Are you longing for that day? Be careful then. And make sure that you are indeed ready to appear before the Lord God Almighty. Make sure that you do not live with a false security. Make sure that you do not live with a self-righteousness in you before the Lord. 
And what I mean by that is, will you stand before the Lord one day and say, Lord, I did not have a choice. I had, I had to take that other wife. The one you gave me was just not good enough. Or I did not think it was that important to make peace and to reconcile. Or I don't know what the big deal is about feelings for the same sex or about sexual immorality. Is that how you're going to stand before the Lord one day? But also make sure that your life evidences deeds of righteousness and justice. Not because you bring yourself in favor before God, but just because when you believe, as we study right through James right now, when you have faith in Jesus Christ, it is followed Good works is followed by our faith. How can we be religious? How can we have faith or claim that we have faith, but live an unrighteous life, a life where we are indeed against any justice and decide what is right and wrong for ourselves instead of leaning on God and God's word alone? Yes, perhaps you might say one day, Lord, that's just how I filled out my taxes every year. I know I was stealing, but that was the best for me at that time. I just had to bribe them to get that business deal. I did not think it was my task to take care of the poor. I saw them. I prayed for them, but I, that's just how it was. I was so busy. Remember when Jesus come and sit on the throne, he will separate the goats from the sheep, and he will remind the goats, the unbelievers and the hypocrites, that they did not feed him, that they did not give him something to drink, that they did not clothe him, and when he was sick, they did not look after him and in prison, and they did not visit him. While the righteous, he said, did just the opposite. And when they asked, but when did we do that? What was the reply? Jesus said, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. It doesn't matter how religious we are. If our worshiping of God does not change our hearts and our lives, it has no purpose then our religious exercises are of no use. No, the Lord says justice should roll down from our lives as waters. Justice should roll down from our churches as waters. Righteousness should flow as a never-drying stream. It lacked in Israel's life. If that regained their rightful place, their offering would have been acceptable and the day of the Lord will be light for them. But it wasn't. So what will the day of the Lord be for us? Yes, we are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. And thus we have to listen again this morning when he tells us to repent to turn away from our sins, to clothe ourselves with Christ, who is our righteousness. Because there is forgiveness. There is hope. The day of the Lord has not yet come. There is still time. Time to rest in Christ completely. How are we not in a season, in this season, again reminded of the wonderful gift that God has given us. The answer that God has given for our sin problem. And He sent His own Son into this world. And it reminds us that there is no other place to go but to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of sinners. The one place where God's wrath already became visible and met with His grace is there on the cross of Calvary, 
And only when you and I throw ourselves at His feet as guilty sinners pleading for God's forgiveness and grace will we indeed find Him in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not too long ago, I read the story of how a man called Augustus, top lady, knew this truth and how he wrote the hymn, Rock of Ages. He lived in England in the 1700s and wrote this hymn in the first year of the American Revolution, 1776. He was in the field in England when a, a big storm came down on suddenly upon him. Being far away from the village, he just ran to a large rock that was there and thought he could lean against the rock to escape most of the beat of the storm. And when he got to the rock, he actually found there was a crack huge enough for him to fit in there. So he wiggled himself in there, and he was sheltered from the storm. And while he was standing there, he thought of God's coming judgment and of the fact that Jesus, the rock of ages, was broken by God so that sinners like you and I can hide ourselves in him and be safe. And that's how that hymn was born. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. If you meet God, and if you want to serve Him, if you want to worship Him, it is only possible in our Savior, in our Christ. In Him the day of the Lord will be gladness and rejoicing for you and me, and terrible for the enemies of God and the enemies of God's church. Without Him there will be no light, but only darkness. Where would we go but to our Savior? Again this morning as we celebrate the Lord's Supper, are we reminded that He is the rock. He is our salvation. He is our shelter against the wrath of God. He demands your heart again this morning and your obedience. Remember, Obedience is still better than sacrifice. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Amen. Let's continue to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Now I remind you this morning of two aspects of the Lord's Supper. The first is the fact that we remember Christ. He has commanded us to use the supper in remembrance of Him. And at this table, we remember that our Lord was sent by the Father into the world, assumed our flesh and blood, and from the beginning to the end of His life, bore for us the wrath of God. He was bound that we might be set free Though innocent, he was condemned to death, that we might be acquitted at the judgment seat of God. He let his blessed body be nailed to the cross, and so took our curse upon him to fill us with his blessing. He was forsaken by God, that we might never more be forsaken by him. By his death and the shedding of his blood, he confirmed the new an everlasting covenant of grace when he said, it is finished. Finally, Christ has commanded us to celebrate the Holy Supper until he comes. We receive at his table a foretaste of the abundant joy which he has promised and look forward to the marriage feast of the Lamb when he will drink the wine new with us in the kingdom of his Father. So let us rejoice and give him glory for the marriage feast of the Lamb is coming. Let us pray. Gracious God and our Father, we thank you that you have given us your only Son as a sacrifice for our sins and as your food and drink unto eternal life. We pray work in our hearts by your Holy Spirit through this supper so that Entrusting ourselves more and more to your Son, Jesus Christ, we may 
not live in our sins, but ye in us and we in you. Strengthen our faith that you will forever be our gracious Father who gives us all things necessary for body and soul. Grant us your grace that we may joyfully take up our cross, that we will deny ourselves, that we will confess our Savior. Teach us to expect our Lord Jesus Christ from heaven, who will change our mortal body to be like his glorious body and take us to himself in eternity. In his name we pray. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take, eat, remember, and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. And then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, remember, and believe that the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was shed for the complete forgiveness of our sins. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. That, that is indeed what you have done today again. As you brought to us a visible sign that you have set aside for yourself these elements so that, Lord, we could be nourished by it, knowing that your Holy Spirit eventually does exactly that spiritually in us. Thank you, Lord, that you know us so well you know how we doubt your promises and that you come and assure us again today that as sure as we have touched these elements, as sure as if we have tasted it, as sure as we have saw, seen it and smelled it, that you have indeed with that same certainty taken away all our sins for the sake of Jesus. And we praise you for that. Amen. We continue now to do our collection for mercy ministries as we usually do.
Heavenly Father, we come before you today and we thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed on us. And we thank you for giving us the ability to help others that need it. As we call this mercy ministry, this is a time for us to have mercy and to love those in need. And it is a ministry, it is our chance to show those that we love them and for us to shine your light to those in need. Let us not just give these offerings, just empty our pockets, but let us with our hearts and our minds reach out to those in need. Let us not just look to what we need, but what so many others need. Be there for them. Pray for them. Open up their hearts and their minds to receive your word and your blessings. We pray all these things in Jesus' holy and majestic name. Amen. Thanks, Brad. Let us close, uh, sing our closing hymn, Day of Judgment, Day of Wonders. great hymn choice that was amazing receive god's blessing and go from here in peace grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from jesus christ the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth amen